Well, hello everyone. Today I'm going to talk about the paper which is called the Retrieval Augmented Generation for Knowledge Intensive NLP Tasks. So from this topic, you, you can have some intu uh, intuition that this model is about the, the text generator and then this is for the knowledge intensive tasks. And here is the outline of my presentation. First, I will give out the introduction of this paper, and then is the method, uh, including the retrieval generator and decoding. And then is the experiment, which is the application of this model on four tasks. They are open domain question answering, the abstractive uh, question answering, the Jeopardy question generation, and the fact verification. And then later I will talk about the results of this proposed model on these four tasks and also the further discussion. So uh, to understand this paper better, there are some prerequisite knowledge that we need to understand first. First one is what is the knowledge intensive NLP tasks? So um, Basically, this one is related to the uh, related, related to knowledge actually. So it requires the access to a large external knowledge sources like Wikipedia. And this kind of tasks generally are the open domain question answering or the fact checking. And another one is the parametric and non-parametric model. Then what's the difference between these two? So for the parametric model, this is a learning model that summarizes the data with a set of parameters of fixed size. So in other words, most of the model that we are using is the parametric model, such as the, let's say the linear classification model or the regression model. And then the non-parametric model is the one that they don't make the strong assumption. So which means they they are very confirmed of 100% of the, of the prediction uh, that they are going to make. Uh, you can treat this like the, let's say, like the math. We all know that 10 minus 5 equals to 5. So we don't need any um, deep learning model to train this because they will give you the possibility. So for the non-parametric model, they won't give you the possibility. Uh, so, so this uh, model such as the k-nearest neighbors and the SVM. So if we can understand uh, these two concepts first, then it's easier to understand this paper. So now is the background and the motivation of the paper. Uh, the background is that the large pre-trained language models such as BERT is getting more and more popular and people use it a lot to train the downstream tasks. So they have the very obvious advantage. They can store the factual knowledges uh, because they have so many uh, learning parameters. And also they achieve the state-of-the-art results with the fine-tune on the downstream uh, tasks such as the classification. But they also have the disadvantage. So compared to the task-specific models, they, uh, they perform not right, uh, as well as these task-specific uh, models because in these models we can also use some different method uh, like uh, let's say the attention, also they can try some different loss functions. And also uh, another disadvantage is that they don't quite have the ability to precisely excise or expand the knowledge. So in this paper, they propose the solution is the hybrid, which is the combination of the parametric and non-parametric model. Here is the model. Uh, this is so-called Retrieval Augmented Generation, uh, which is REG. So this is a combination of a pre-trained parametric memory generation model, which is in this part, and, oh, sorry, which is in this part, and also a non-parametric memory, which is this part. So I will explain this graph first. Um, with the input is a query, um, we can treat this as different questions of, uh, from different tasks. Let's say for the question answering, uh, you define the middle year. So also for the fact verification or for the uh, Jeopardy question. And this all um, can, be uh, can be treated as the question, which is the query. And then, and then you, uh, after you embedding this, you pass this to the retriever <coughs> through this searching method. And 
and, and through this searching method, you can get, let's say, top K document uh, that related that related to this question. Um, and after you get this document, you pass this document together with this uh, previous query to the generator. <clears throat> And this generator is a pre-trained generate, uh, generative sequence to sequence transformer. So after this generator, it can generate the uh, possible answers like it's shown in here. <clears throat> so basically this is the architecture of this model. Uh, so there are two components of the model. The first one is a retriever that returns the top K distributions over text passages. By, uh, by a query X. And then another one is the generator that generates a current token based on the context of the previous token. So these are basically the model. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> and now I'm going to talk about the details of the retriever and the generator. So in the retriever, this is a dense pass uh, passage retriever. So this is a uh, uh, this is a uh, by encoder architecture, which is already pre-trained. And then this is the, uh, the, the formula uh, that is uh, the algorithm that is based on. So uh, in this formula, this part, this is the dense representation of the document that produced by this transformer. And this is the query representation. So the, so the output is a list of uh, K elements. That, uh, uh, that is the possible answers for the query. And then for this generator, generator uh, they use the BART, uh, which is a, a variation or modification of BERT model. So this is a pre-trained sequence to sequence transformer with 400 million parameters. And then, and then the model architecture, it has the encoder and the decoder. So the input is the concatenation of the retrieved content and the query, as we mentioned before. And then for the decoding part, they use two decoding methods. The first one is the rec sequence. So they use the same retrieved document to generate the complete sequence at a time. And another one is the rec token. So this one is like to treat the, the, the passage is lightened and uh, allow the generator to choose from this content. Now is the uh, experiment. So in the experiment time, they use a single Wikipedia dump for the non-parametric knowledge, uh, which is the December 2018 dump. They follow one of the reference paper and uh, for each Wikipedia page, this is split it into the disjoint 100 word chunks to make a total like uh, 21 million documents. And they retrieving the top K documents, which K is uh, the range of five to 10. So uh, next I'm going to introduce this four specific task that the proposed model is working on. The first one is the open, open domain question answer. So for the open domain question answer means you submit um, question to the searching engine and then it gave you the exact answer for your question. So you can treat this as the, the generally uh, we do the Google search generally within uh, let's say the top three or top five answers you can always find the exact one that you, you want. So for the training training part they treat the question and answer as just a simple pair input output this kind of text pair and then they train the reg by directly uh, they minimizing the negative likelihood of these answers. So for uh, so and there are four data sets in this um, training and the evaluation metric is the standard ex, uh, exact math, math, uh, match matrix. So by this name, you can see it called exact match. So which means uh, they will compare the prediction and the ground truth character by character, letter by letter. So if it's exact match means 100% match, then it's um, the, it give out uh, the accuracy is one, otherwise it's zero. So, so yeah, this is kind of uh, the method. Another one is abstractive question answer. So from this name, you can see that um, the, the answer will be very short. So generally just uh, 
the, the, the very brief summary of the of our whole passage answer. So the, the task they use is MS Marco. And uh, this one is the question submit to a searching engine. They retrieve 10 snippets and a full sentence uh, annotated to each retrieved pass uh, passages means they, they will give out uh, the, the provenance of these uh, snaps. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, yeah, uh, of all these uh, possible answers. And, but in this uh, paper, they modify this task. They only keep the question and answer, not the retract passages. And um, well, uh, for this kind of questions, uh, uh, in, uh, from our experience, we all know that sometimes we type out the question and then we cannot get the answer. So uh, they also face the same issue, but uh, they can rely on the BART to generate the ac uh, accepted response. Next one is the Jeopardy question generation. Uh, this is a very interesting format. It consists of the, um, uh, the, the trying to guess the answer, which is the entity from a fact about this entity. So for example, uh, we gave out a question like in uh, 1986, Mexico scored as the first country to host this international sports competition twice. And the answer is the World Cup. And so the data site, uh, they use the search QA. So in total, there are about 14K samples, which is, uh, is a not very big data site. And then 70% uh, uh, training, 10% development, and 20% uh, testing. The evaluation matrix they use is QBlue1. This is a modification of blue score we generally use. So uh, instead of, uh, let's say, for, uh, for the comparison of the engrams, they put a higher weight on the matching entities. Let's say, uh, let's say for the World Cup, this part, it may uh, match more to the international sports competition instead of uh, this twice. And it also has a higher correlation with the human judgment. Um, because uh, language, uh, to evaluate the language, uh, there, uh, it's, it's not like you can compare the, the letters one by one. So, so in this evaluation matrix, more human judgment is involved. Next one is a, a fact verification. The data set they use is so-called fever. So, um, so this is about to classify if a statement is supported by Wikipedia or not or there's not enough information to decide. So uh, um, from, the, uh, uh, from the description, we can know that in these classification tasks, there are three classes like support or refute or not enough info. And then there are also uh, a binary classification in this, uh, 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 in this data. And then in this paper, they use uh, both two. So in this implementation, of these four tasks and uh, for this open domain QA, they reporting the test number using uh, 15 retrieved documents. And for the rec sequence model, they reporting the te uh, test results use using 50 retrieved documents. And then for the open MS Marco and Jeopardy question generation, the report testing number using 10 retrieved documents. And uh, they also chewing up BART large model as a baseline. So here's the result. For the open domain question answer, so um, they can see for, uh, for this right token better, it uh, perform better than, uh, than the BART one. So, uh, so um, in this experiment, they also find out that this REC token can generate the correct answer even when the correct answer is not present. And for this abstractive question answering, and uh, so we can see this is for the REC token and the, uh, the, and the REC sequence, they overperform than the BART. Um, this, is quite, uh, this is quite impressive because in this model, this uh, some questions are not answerable and these models uh, with the access to the specific answers. And then for the Jeopardy question uh, generation, 
Uh, here are some examples that it generate. So in from this example, it said uh, the red token performed best in this task. So for the red token is um, this one. And then the, the question it generates is, is the uh, only US state named after a US president. So you can uh, guess what uh, the answer of this. And uh, for this sequence, it generates the answer is like, it's the state where you find this national park. So from this two description, you can see that the, the question that generated by the reg token is more relevant to the answer Washington. And then uh, they also gave out the hypothesis about this uh, result. So they said that in the uh, Jeopardy question, they, all, they always contain two pieces or, uh, or more pieces of the information about this entity. So, so we can see that, uh, let's say the US state or US president like this. And for the REC token, um, from the previous description, we can, uh, we can know that um, they combine the different pieces of the information and then let the system to choose. So it can synthesize a response from combining the pieces of information. That's why the REC token is more suitable for this task. And then for the effect verification, we can see that REC token and REC sequence outperform the BART. Uh, from here, you can see that the REC token and REC sequence, they have the same result. This is because they treat, um, uh, actually this is a classification task and then they treat the classification label, let's say the support revealed or, or not enough information uh, as as one token, that's why they have the same result. And also, the um, the paper shows some uh, oblations of this proposed model um, and to check how to make the model perform better. And then they uh, and then they got two ways. First is to use more document. And from this graph, you can see um, this is the document they use. And then when you use more document, then you can, you can have the higher accuracy in both REC token and REC sequence. And then another one is learned retrieval. This one means to prevent the gradient from the propagating into the retriever, means stop the uh, updating the gradient. So you can see from this part, uh, uh, this graph is about the learned retrieval. And then, and then you can see uh, in this part, the REC token and the uh, and the right sequence also perform better in the learned retrieval. And also with the proposed model, there are some related work. First one is the single task retrieval, let's say some, uh, something like this uh, generator, and also the general purpose architecture for the NLP. So they, uh, so they aim to expand the space of the possible tasks with a single unified architecture. And then another one is the learned retrieval. Another one is the memory-based architecture. So the memory is com uh, comprised of uh, raw data. It allows more interpretability and uh, easier to update and edit the data. So in summary, in this paper, it proposed a hybrid generation model with access to the parametric and non-parametric re uh, retrieved-based external memory in the form of the Wikipedia. And it achieves the SOTA results in knowledge-intensive NLP tasks. So they also propose some future work, uh, which is how the, uh, to study how the parametric and non-parametric memory uh, interact with each other and how to most effectively combine the different components. So uh, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you everyone.